How to improve your self-esteem after a breakup. Now there's three particular aspects that we're gonna jump into today in today's video, so stay tuned for those. But before we actually do that, let's define what is self-esteem. That way that we are all on the same page and then we know exactly what we're talking about. So according to the dictionary, self-esteem is defined as confidence in one's own abilities or worth. So if you're watching this video and you've just gone through a breakup, there's a high chance that you're probably feeling any one of the following, that loss of direction, a lack of identity, a lack of confidence, maybe just feeling angry. Whatever it is, we're gonna dive into the three ways to rebuild your self-esteem after that breakup so that you can attract in a healthy, positive relationship. And no, none of those steps is getting in bed with somebody else. Sure, you might think, heck, I'll just go to the gym and I'll just get in the best shape that I possibly can and then just be all like, yeah. I'm speaking from experience here. Eight years ago, terrible relationship breakup, I was in a very, very low point. I dived into the gym, got into the absolute best shape that I possibly could. I ended up competing in a bodybuilding comp as a result of it all anyway. And see, I was doing it because I wanted to rebuild my self-esteem. I wanted to feel good about myself. And ultimately, that one that we all do so often is you wanna then see, when you see your ex next, you wanna make sure that you're in better shape than when you left. And what I found is that it wasn't actually building my self-esteem, instead, it was building my ego. And the thing that I found when I actually walked past her and saw her in the street was the fact that it actually didn't really make me feel as amazing as what I thought it would. You know, it wasn't building my self-esteem the way that I actually thought it was building my self-esteem. Instead, as I said, it was building my ego. Self-esteem is a grounded, centered, knowing who you are. An ego perspective is an over-projection of self-esteem. It's an over-projection of who you are. And it ultimately stems from a really deep insecurity of actually who you are. Whether that's knowing who you are, or actually knowing who you are and not liking who you are. So the ego is something that we wanna just keep to the side for the moment because the focus here is really about rebuilding that self-esteem in a healthy way. All right, so the first way to build your self-esteem, and you're probably gonna say, Brett, this seems extremely counterintuitive, but the truth of the matter is, it's extremely crucial. And it's something that too many people, I think, overlook. And it, because it's so simple, it's so easy, but it's also kind of hard and difficult at the same time. And that is to really isolate yourself. But what it means is spending that time with yourself and really asking yourself that key fundamental question that I love so much which is who am I? And when you ask yourself, who am I? It's not a case of that interrogation of like, who am I? Like, you know, what do you, you know? No, it's an inquiry to actually start to understand what are some of the things that you like? What are the, some of the things that you dislike? And really starting to be able to understand who you are in this world and start to uncover your own identity. Now for me, this is exactly what I did after my relationship. After I had competed in that bodybuilding comp and realized that it was actually not helping me to actually build my own self-esteem, wasn't really helping me to feel happy and, and fulfilled within my own space. I started to spend a lot more time by myself. I started to sit in meditation a lot more. I started to journal a lot and just really sit with my own self and ask myself the questions, what am I feeling here? Why am I feeling this? And really starting to understand who am I and how I operate. And it's one of the key things that I speak to all of my students that I work with. You have a responsibility to yourself and to yourself alone to understand how you operate. And so when it comes to self isolation, now let's be honest, we're probably all in self isolation to some degree right now, being everything that's happening with coronavirus and everything like that. So you're probably feeling this, you're kind of forced to. But at the same time, notice if you're actually also distracting yourself from what I'm saying here, like really sitting with yourself, because it leads into number two, which is all about self-compassion. And self-compassion is a really key thing when it comes to healing and rebuilding and in improving your self-esteem on the other side of a relationship breakup, because what self-compassion allows you to do is to forgive yourself. I did my best. I did the best that I could with what I had, the knowledge that I had at the time. And okay, it wasn't right. I might be hurting right now, but I'm gonna have that self-compassion for myself that says I'm okay, and I'm gonna be okay on the other side of this as well. So really being able to sit with that self-compassion will also help the self-isolation part because in those moments when you're sitting in that space, you get to actually be you know, comfortable with yourself 
and allow yourself to have that self-inquiry. And ultimately, self-compassion is something that plays out in so many areas in life, and I will be doing more videos on self-compassion because it is such a key thing when it comes to being able to just you know, tackle life in a new way, in a way where you are in control and you are empowered and you are not held back by everybody else's projections or, you know, ideas or anything like that. So stay tuned for more self-compassion videos. Now, diving into number three, it's all about trying a bunch of things. I said at the start, there's a high chance that in that relationship that you're in, there's a loss of identity. There's a questioning like, who am I? And that's perfectly fine. Maybe you've been living out their life for the last however long your relationship was around for. But at the same time, now is your opportunity to start to actually understand, you know what, did I even enjoy half the things that we did? Or like, was I just enjoying it because I was doing it with them and I was doing it for them? So now is your opportunity to try so many things. Like, I don't know, go bowling, go to different restaurants, like, go dancing, go do some videos, you know, look into so many different areas of life and really start to experience all of it. Because what that is going to allow you to do is start to develop your identity and it's going to build confidence as well as your self-esteem because in doing so, you know who you are, you know what you like, you know what you dislike and ultimately you're going to start to create boundaries for yourself, which means when somebody asks you, hey, this is what we're doing, you know, you know, do you want to come along? You know it's something that, you know what, I just don't actually even like that. So you know what, I'm going to pass. I'm going to honor my own boundaries. And when you honor your own boundaries, it's going to increase your self-esteem, self-confidence, self-worth, and ultimately have you feel a lot more happier with inside. Because let's be honest, the whole point of a lot of the things that we're talking about here is the fact that you just want to be happy. You're in a relationship and then that relationship has broken down, you've had that breakup, and now you're feeling that pain, you're feeling that hurt, that heartache, all of these things. And ultimately, deep down underneath all of this, all you want to do is just be happy. So being able to go through these three steps will ensure that you are happy within yourself no matter the situation, no matter the circumstances, and ultimately, if something like this happens again, then, well, there's a high chance it probably won't because you're aware of it and you've done all the work and you know exactly who you are, so you're not going to necessarily do that. But if something like this happens again, you'll be okay because you know how to rebuild. So that being said, if you got value out of this one, like it, share it, comment it, show it some love. Make sure you subscribe, smash that bell, and I'll see you on the next video.